Hi, I'm Phil, and I'm going to explore the uh, LoRa Wang radio networks. So um, this is my recent experience uh, to use the um, LoRa Wang radio to uh, send data from my weather station. And here I'm measuring temperature and humidity with a DHT11 module, which is this one up here on the, on the left. So the weather station is inside my Stevenson uh, box and it transmits the uh, Laura Wang radio packets from here to, uh, an, uh, to the internet. So this is where I eventually want to go. And to transmit it to the internet, I use a gateway. So this is the Laura One gateway that um, I have uh, in my study, and it's connected via Wi-Fi to the to uh, the internet. So this is the overall arrangement. So in the weather station, the uh, sensors uh, are called endpoints, and they're connected uh, by the Laura One radio module, which is this one here in uh, yellow. Uh, and the whole arrangement here transmits the Laura Wang radio packets to my Laura Wang gateway. It then goes on to my Wi-Fi access point and my home server and router send the information to the internet where at the TTN network, they have a network server and an application server, and it um, formats the data so that I can see the um, temperature and humidity from my weather station on my PC. But not only my PC, it can be seen anywhere on the internet. And the service that I'm using from TT, uh, TTN is free. So I'm not using it that often, perhaps every five minutes, I'll update the uh, temperature and humidity values. But before I look at the um, internet and the Laura Wang gateways, I'm going to have a look at um, point to point communications that doesn't use the gateway. So here I'm going to use a master and a slave to uh, communicate. But uh, before I do that, we'll explore a little bit about Laura Wang Radio. So um, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth have been quite um, adequate for many applications uh, in the home and um, in industry, but they uh, don't give a adequate coverage when you want to go further than your home or from the properties. So um, you could use a cellular radio like um, 5G, but that costs quite a bit of money to uh, operate. <clears throat> a much more recent solution has been Laura One, and it fills the gap. So it gives you quite a, an extensive range, um, but with low bandwidth. And that means you don't send a lot of information. You only send a few bytes uh, to... Um, uh, describe what your measurements of, say, temperature and humidity are, and uh, you can then um, use this at very, very low cost. The Things Network provide a service that can send the uh, information about my temperature and humidity uh, to my PC, but it all starts at the endpoint, and that's the one in my weather station. It, the packets are then sent to the gateway and at the things network, they manage a network server and an application server. So I'm going to explore uh, the endpoint using a Grove LoRa E5 radio. And I'll describe what that is. And I'll uh, have a look at two projects 
One will be, the first project will be a um, point to point transmission. And the second one will be um, using an endpoint uh, with um, a connection to weather sensors, and it will go via a gateway to the Laura Wang radio network. So um, the Grove Laura E5, which costs around about under 17 US dollars, has been released fairly recently. And um, I'd be one of the first ones to get it. So I thought it'd be a piece of cake to um, get this to work after having three years experience with uh, LoRa radio, all point to point. But in this case, it took me quite a long time. And it's very, very different from the previous generation of LoRa radios. But with a bit of help from Seed Studio, um, I eventually got it all to work. So some of the features is that there is a small microprocessor unit that uh, handles the um, control of the um, E5. Uh, that is a STM32 computer. And the nice thing about it, it actually handles a number of uh, frequency plans and it supports the whole of the Laura Wang protocol. The one that I'm interested in is this um, Australian one at 915 megahertz. The thing that I really like about um, Laura Wang is that it has long range communications. And while 10 kilometers might be ideal, I'd be quite happy with um, communications up to about three kilometers. A nice aspect should be that it um, should be easy to control using the AT commands uh, for the uh, UART connection. So here are the projects and I had to um, attempt these a few times before I got it to work. So with the help of SEED, I eventually got the point to point and also the uh, gateway project to work. So here's an outline of the point-to-point um, -point project. So uh, my arrangement inside on the desktop is that I've got two E5 modules. Both of them are in uh, yellow Grove Lego wraps. So this is um, the master here and the slave is uh, on the right and they're connected. You can see the radio antennas of the Laura Wang radio. So here's the master. And uh, overall, for this project, I want to confirm that the C Studio wiki works. And I want to resolve any issues that I have with uh, Seed to, uh, to make it work. So, um, this is all part of commissioning the um, devices that I purchased from Seed Studio. And um, I want to learn a little bit about long distance communications that would be suitable to transmit um, weather information packets. So the only difference between the demonstration on the um, Seed Wiki and my implementation is that I'm going to operate on 915 megahertz uh, to correspond with the Australian um, allocation for Laura Wang. So the um, hardware devices for this project, I'm going to use two XEO uh, computers with an expansion unit, and I'll be using two Grove Laura E5 modules. For my software, I'm using the um, Arduino IDE and programming in C++. So the example that I'm using comes from Seed Studio. And the only modification that I'm really making is to um, allocate this to the Australian frequency band of 915. 
So you use the same software module for both the master and the slave. Um, if you want to um, use it for the slave, you just simply uncomment this command in the code. And the overall results, it worked quite well. So what I've done is to compare its uh, performance after an hour, after a couple of hours, and compare the signal to noise ratio uh, uh, over a um, short distance and also uh, within my own property at the maximum extremes. And it performed quite well. And I got plenty of help from Seed Studio to get this going. So I was quite happy with the results of that. And that encouraged me to go on to the second project. And this is using a LoRaWAN connection to the, uh, the Things network. And the, uh, the overall objective is to uh, change from the European plan to the Australian plan to configure uh, the TNT um, endpoints. And again, to confirm that the second example on the seed um, wiki also works, resolve any issues that I have with seed and learn a little bit more about the, um, the software to control the E5 module. So this is very similar to the um, first project. The only difference is that I'm adding the uh, DHT11 uh, Grove module, and it measures the temperature and humidity. So uh, configuring the software, the software from Seed, uh, the wiki, allows me to um, capture the app and the device codes that is the app EUI and the device EUI. So there's no need to hunt for those on the package. The software takes care of, um, of that, but you um, have to transfer these values to the configuration on the NT, on, on the TTN uh, network. So you put those values that you find uh, from your code, uh, so you um, use a um, serial module and it will tell you what these values are. I found the app key on the TNN website and I transferred those to the Arduino code. You also have to um, check that you're on the right frequency plan. And for Australia, it's the AU915. Uh, and it has a uh, bandwidth of 13 megahertz. But taking those values, and also I configure it for a OTAA configuration. I put these into the code and I add my APPT. So the overall results and I are uh, shown here, and uh, this is um, available on the uh, TNN uh, website. I've also uh, formatted the payload so that I can clearly see the uh, humidity and the uh, temperature. And again, I was quite happy with the results. It worked um, on an indoor unit, and it also worked on the unit in my outdoor weather station. So overall, I was quite happy with the uh, results. And I learned a bit about transmitting data to the uh, TTN network. Also learned a bit about Arduino code in handling uh, packets of information and how to process uh, these using the, these functions. Only issues I have is that it's polling too quickly and I need to increase the latency. So for these measurements, I don't really need to transmit information much more than about once every five minutes. 
In the future, I want to connect to the Things Speak network and to uh, MQTT servers. I did try. I was quite happy with uh, some of these results. I did try getting an LED to uh, work on the um, uh, on the Sedino computer, and I configured that second um, computer also to work. Plenty of help from Seed Studio, and I eventually got it to uh, to work the way I, I wanted it. So for my references are um, the Things Network and um, all my devices come from Seed Studio, including the Gateway. Uh, and I learned quite a bit about um, programming uh, in C++. So thank you for listening. I'm going to uh, do an update uh, for, with my next um, video where I'll look at um, using the microbit uh, as the controller, and it will connect to the uh, LoRaWAN network and also to the, uh, the Things network.